I want to talk about what we saw over this weekend because the president is in a tough spot and his defenders were out in full force. And this is what they said yesterday. I've asked you a specific question. I'd like a specific answer. The president has the State Department. He's got the CIA. He's got the Pentagon. He's got a number of other agencies. Why did he use three private lawyers to get information on Biden from the uh, from the Ukrainian government rather than go through all of the agencies of his government? Two different points. Number one. Uh, how about John, answering my question? The president no, was pushing the president of Ukraine to investigate a political rival. I cannot believe that that is OK with you. I can't believe it's okay with you. It, if this is a principle, it's not okay because he didn't. It, it, but he didn't do that. It's in he the transcript. It. We all I read, read it. I read the transcript. President Zelensky says we are almost ready to buy more javelins from the United States for defense purposes, and President Trump replies, "I would like you to do us a favor, though." Well, you just added another word. No. It's you said in I'd the like transcript. you to do a favor, though. Yes, it's he, in the he, it's in when the I read White the tra House transcript. I mean, that was kind of disastrous when you look at these attempts because it's a difficult position to defend. Yeah, I mean, they did not attempt to defend what was being said and done on that call. Everyone, almost to the person, tried to basically just change the subject to, uh, to deflect to Democrats trying to undermine President Trump from the beginning, to say that the whistleblower really wasn't a whistleblower. There's not much out there in the way of a defense of what was actually said on the call, and it's very telling because it's very hard to explain that. It seemed like Kevin McCarthy hadn't even read the transcript. He wasn't familiar with the key points of the call, and it's not the first time that, that uh, when he's faced with questions about what's in black and white on that piece of paper, he hasn't been able to answer for it. Yeah. The McCarthy notably was part of the group that advocated for the White House releasing the call notes, which uh, was interesting. But in that, um, in the IG um, statement that was just released, the Inspector General's statement, they, you know, it, it, we have to note again, it's the whistleblower says that they had firsthand knowledge of the complaints that were listed. Um, and that is something really important to, to, to keep in mind here as the, as all the GOP rallies around the president and relies on these talking points. The most the most recent talking point being, OK, maybe the president, his call with the Ukrainian president was improper, but it's not an impeachable offense. I mean, what do you think, Phil? These conversations are ridiculous. Let's go to a world of a 12 year old who might be more mature than what we're seeing on TV. You tell that 12 year old you're grounded, the equivalent of telling the Ukrainians you can't have your money. And the 12 year old says, I'll help you with a favor. I'll help doing yard work tomorrow. What do you think the implicit agreement is there? The 12 year old saying, I hope by doing the favor, maybe I'm not grounded anymore. What do you think the Ukrainians think? Wow, if we buy this stuff or if we help the investigation, it won't have anything to do with releasing funds. We must be stupid. This is not that complicated, except for Washington. Sean? Yeah, yeah, Brianna, I just I think just to add to Phil's point, you know, I think there's really a, a very clear reason as to why the president is going to 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 Ukraine, to Australia, to others. He's kind of shopping around the international community to see who will help him in, uh, you know, in going after his political foes. You know, in one of those interviews that we played, you had someone saying, you know, the president's got CIA, he's got the Defense Department, he's got other agencies. The truth is, is that he doesn't. The president has the Department of Justice because he's put acolytes at the top of the Department of Justice. But the president knows that the most effective, the most talented intelligence community on earth, he knows that he can't go to that intelligence community and use the tools, the authorities that the, that the IC has in order to do what he's asking other uh, nations to do. And so that's why he's going outside of the United States and, and inviting others to come into the United States and to interfere into, in our democratic process, interfere in our, in our elections. And, you know, the, the, what, he, what, he, what he really, re, we really have to be careful about is that it's the job of the intelligence community to monitor what all of those other foreign nations are doing. And that's why the president has found himself in this situation. This is a very dangerous thing for a president to be doing. And I think that when the facts come out, uh, this is, to use an overused word, this is an unprecedented uh, set of circumstances.